The Mix 88.5 Property Update, brought to you by the award-winning Tudor Group, developers of Tudor Villas, and in the final stages of Tudor Court Condominium, Pratam Nak Soy 2. The Tudor Group, Thai lifestyle, European standards. Hello, I'm Mark Rogers, and you're watching the Property Update from Mix 88.5 FM on PMTV with my guest, my normal guest, Tim Gladwin from Salmons and brought to you by the Tudor Group. 88.5 Property Update. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Property Update. I'm Mark Rogers, so just filling in for Russell J this week as he's away. And I'm joined, of course, in the studio by, oh, what's his name again? Oh, yeah, Tim Gladwin from uh, Salmons. So stay tuned. We've got uh, quite a lot of stuff coming up if you're interested in property, purchasing, renting. Or anything else, really. You might even learn something. There we go. Nearly had a little cough then. Good job I got my coffee. Uh, right, welcome, Tim. Good afternoon to you, sir. Yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, good afternoon. You're feeling all right today? Yeah, not too bad. All prepared. Look, he's got, he's got all his sheets here for all the things we're going to be going through. So, I mean, obviously, the, we'll start off straight away uh, with uh, what's actually happening in the market and, uh, you know, people we've been chatting to, how are they getting on at the moment? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's probably fair to say from my own personal experience, at least, that um, driving around, uh, albeit not much in patio itself, but around Jomtian, uh, to and from home, to and from meetings. Uh, I think town probably seems a little bit quieter than one would normally uh, mm. expect at this time of the year. But of course, uh, I don't think that should come as any great surprise to anyone. Uh, obviously, we're, uh, while the floods are now, to a large extent, a thing of the past, and the news coverage around the world has dried up, uh, obviously it was something that was covered very extensively in the world's media, uh, on the TV. When your parents at home hear about it, you know it's, uh, it's really getting out there. And, and, and I think you know, an awful lot of people, probably those people who are a little bit less familiar with Thailand and Pattaya than, than some of the others who, have come in, who come here, uh, may well have either cancelled or rearranged their, their, their trips. Well, we're hoping for rearrangement, and that's what uh, uh, Tata are looking for as well, because uh, obviously, like you say, if people haven't uh, been here before, then they all got scared with the floods, even though it was only about 20% of Bangkok, I believe, uh, that was actually covered in floods. And Swanapun is way outside. If anything, for me, I, it's a good... If you're listening online abroad, Patti is a great place to come because it's only about an hour away from the airport anyway, so it takes you about as long to get here as it would do to the centre of Bangkok. So there you go. Book your first stop here in Patti if you're going to go travelling around Thailand. That's my uh, recommendation for the day. So, yeah, Tim, so you're saying you've been travelling around Jong Tiem. Like, what, any idea? What, 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 what do you think? I mean, everybody's got an opinion on how much quieter it is because of the floods, but have you actually got a percentage, you yeah. think? Or It's not that easy for me to uh, make an assessment because I don't, generally spend that much time in, in Pattaya itself and I think obviously Pattaya tends to be a, a place where you would go if you were trying to make that kind of an assessment. Uh, I haven't been out in Walking Street, I haven't been, mm -hmm. like I say, spending much time around other tourist areas, but um, just, just a sense really. It, it, and it, it's a sense to the extent that it could well be wrong. Um, I don't think so. I, I, I would be I would surprised because obviously the floods were such a significant event um, and it, it would be much more of a shock if they hadn't had an effect. Yeah. Um, I personally don't think that it will be uh, a long-term effect, uh, as we discussed uh, some time ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. When, when, you, when, you, when you look at the way Thailand recovered after the yellow shirts occupied Savannaboom uh, Airport, uh, there were people at the time, commentators, saying that it would take years for the Thai um, tourism a tourist industry to recover. It took about um, four weeks. It, 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 it took, uh, you know, three or four weeks. And, and shortly thereafter, uh, record levels of arrivals were being reported. So mm. I, I don't go for this uh, argument that tourists or, or, or people generally have particularly long memories. Qu quite the opposite. I think they forget things and move on very, very quickly. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, Thailand remains one of the more popular uh, tourist destinations in the world. People love coming here, people who have been here uh, tend to go away with uh, very, very good memories. They, you know, when you go uh, overseas, living in Thailand, people tend to uh, recount those stories to you when you tell them that you live in Thailand. And I think it's very easy to form the conclusion that the vast majority of people who have been here, the vast majority of people whose friends have been here, seem to have a very, very high regard for uh, Thailand and, and what it can offer to a holidaymaker. So uh, I really don't have many doubts that uh, if we can recover that quickly from the occupation of Savannah Airport, I think the, the recovery from the, the flood, which actually didn't even 
directly affect Patty in any way, mm. shape, or form, it will be, will be quick and it will be significant. In fact, um, I, would, I would anticipate that by the new year, tourist numbers will at the very least be back up to normal levels and in fact may well be higher than normal because there are and will be undoubtedly people who have rearranged. They were going to come here pre-Christmas but obviously the, the floods were an issue. It wasn't necessarily that easy to determine uh, online or on the news without coming here what the threat or the, the yeah. risk was to you. So a lot of people took the safe option and, and cancelled or rearranged the holiday. Uh, I think now that they know everything is better, a significant proportion of those people will be looking to come here again. So um, when you bear in mind the way things have been over the last year, um, the way the market has continued to improve in spite of the challenges, uh, whether domestic or international, and with particular regard there to the ongoing global economic crisis and the, the obvious significant threat uh, that we're told exists for a double-dip recession, in spite of all that, here and in Pattaya and in Thailand, but, but Pattaya in particular, uh, the real estate market has stormed ahead. It's had a... Well, I was going to ask you that because obviously if numbers are down, you would think, especially in the... Well, I wouldn't think in the purchase uh, area uh, it would change too much, but in the, in the rental pl in market, you would think, well, numbers down, that the rental market will be suffering. But actually, you were saying before, and I've noticed it chatting to people like the guys from Coast or whatever, that rentals are pretty much booming. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, I think a lot of people formed the opinion, and we, uh, understandably, that a lot of the rental properties were, were so incredibly uh, busy because so many people were coming down from Bangkok and, mm -hmm. and renting places for one or two months and obviously that did have an effect on the market. However, uh, I think it's probably fair to say that the vast majority of those uh, people who escaped Bangkok by coming down here have now left, returned mm -hmm. to Bangkok. Um, and obviously, you know, you can see that very clearly in the roads, given that a lot of the people yeah. who came down here came in the cars and, and the roads were very, very busy for a while. Except, ex except for the ones who um, their businesses are still flooded, you know, in the uh, business parts, because I know quite a few Thais who are still staying down here, maybe working a little bit, because they haven't got a job to go back to anymore. Sure. sure. You know, so that's I, I, I suspect there will be an element of that, but... Uh, uh, I think that I still think the vast majority of people have now returned, and uh, you know that's perhaps why town appears quiet to me. The roads were so busy for a while. Comparatively, now they're very quiet, and uh, you know if there's one way that you can confuse what would uh, other, otherwise be a fair assessment is if you get used to something being very busy. Yeah. When it goes back to normal, it perhaps seems quiet, and in fact it is, um, and, and maybe that's playing a part. But. Nevertheless, in spite of the fact that so many of these um, uh, people from Bangkok have now returned, uh, rental properties are still very, very busy. Uh, we have a number of clients who have a number of properties each, and uh, many of them are reporting that all their properties are full right up until the yeah, end of April. This is what I've heard a lot as well, actually. You know, so This is obviously the, the, traditional, the end of the traditional high season, uh, the end of the, the western winter. So what seems to be the case is that very, very strong numbers of people are coming here for the, four, uh, the five or six months that tend to constitute the high season here. Yeah, the, uh, the Northern Hemisphere, Western Europe's uh, winter season, because of course it's cheaper to live here in the winter than it is back in the UK, France, Germany, uh, and places like that. Um, I was just thinking as well, actually, with the rental market booming like it is, do you find that that leads on to more purchases because people see that it's quite a vibrant um, income provider, so you get more people buying off-plan investors, that type of thing. Well, I think I think actually it does lead to purchases in more than one way. Uh, on one level, you've got people who are investors and thus prospective landlords. Uh, mm. If they see a vibrant, busy uh, rental market, then obviously there's all the more incentive to buy properties that they can then rent out and and obviously make a return on. Um, so that's obviously one way in which it does benefit the the sale and purchase market. However, uh, it's more than that. Obviously, with people coming here, oh, this, the, these facts are suggesting that there's a lot of people coming here for an extended period of time each year, mm. um, maybe coming for six months, five months, wh whatever. But obviously, they're coming here for an extended period of time. Now, those people may well rent. Some of them may always rent. Mm. However, uh, a proportion of them will rent to start with to see yeah. whether it suits them to see the right area the right condo building or I, exactly yeah. we, we deal with people all the time who uh they say you know this is my first time uh, coming here for an extended period uh, i'm not sure where i want to be full time 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rent for the first six months, see how it goes. When I make my mind up, then I will buy. And, and I think that's quite a common thing to do. Is that a simple. recommendation you do to people, or is it something you bring up in conversation with people when they're not sure about the areas? Yeah, if people are not sure, then it's safer to do something yeah. that's not permanent. I, I, I think that's you know fair to say. Some people... They know exactly what they want, they know exactly where they want to be, they know which development, what style of house. It, for some people, that can dictate where they, where they go. Yeah. Obviously, if you're less than certain, then uh, making a decision that's less final is probably a good way to go. Yeah, I've actually got a friend who bought a place, uh, nice, nice condo, very nice condo actually, but totally the wrong area for him away from where all the areas he knew and uh, I remember he'd lived in it for two days when he returned it and I said how's your condo and he went oh I think I might sell it next year he'd been, in for, right. two, he'd been in it for two days he, he basically bought with emotions rather than thinking it through yeah and, and you know some people do that some people get it right when they do that but obviously there is yeah. scope to make a mistake um, and those, th there's definitely uh, a significant number of people who come here with the head screwed on, screwed on well, and they make the determination that prior to making any final decisions, they're going to they're going to rent in one place, maybe yeah. two, until they find a place that suits them, where they're happy, and and you get a proper feel for the place. There may be some aspects of a particular location that you don't see or mm. appreciate when you just go and have a look at a property yeah. two or three times. Um, if you live there for a, a number of months, the chances are you will become aware of all the yeah. pros and cons of a particular area. Yeah. So, you know, th there's, there's no doubt that it is, for some people, the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, if, if people are that way inclined, then we will mm. persuade them to do to do that. But like I say, there are others and, and they know the town yeah, exceptionally exactly. well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to, to suggest they do that would be a waste of time yeah, energy of and, and money because of yeah. course you know I do tend to come from the, the school always have that you know when you're renting that's dead money yeah. you know when you rent a property however whether it's whether you're paying 5,000 baht a month or 100,000 baht a month you never see that money again yeah. um, it actually goes typically goes towards the landlord uh, paying for the freehold of the property and he has an asset the person renting has has nothing you know this has always been an issue for me and why I've always disliked renting so yeah. I, I, I much prefer whether it's in the UK paying a mortgage every month obviously there's, there's a significant interest element in that but nevertheless you are every month with the money that you earn yeah you're paying something into a, a property that will then become an asset for you and in, in your old age something that you can hopefully rely upon I mean, I think that that's our I mean I'm English or English that, that's our mentality isn't it every every um, home is a castle I think in Germany something like only about 40% of people actually own their houses yeah in continental Europe generally um, to rent renting is is by far and away the most most common yeah. um, and you know it certainly was the case a few years ago that uh, a lot of properties in a lot of cities in, in continental Europe were simply out of um, the, the, out of the price range of the vast majority of the population yeah. and there wasn't the same ability for your average Joe to go yeah. down the back to the bank and, and, and get a, 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 a free markets yeah, like building societies yeah, and, and, and 90% like mortgage or whatever it would yeah. take to, to own the property um, and, and so home ownership was, was, was certainly nowhere near as common particularly for young people it's a def I mean it's definitely different say in somewhere like Greece where to be honest people they own a house they have a plot of land the parents build it when they marry and that's it but also they've got access Greece got access to cheap money which has led us on to the present problem with the euro and that will of course affect a lot of continentals um, and we've got the exchange rates here, just bring them in just a little bit early today. Uh, the pound is at 48 and a half, the US dollar 31.1.2, Aussie dollar 31.3, and the euro down to 41.13. Although that's not the lowest it's been. I do remember a couple of years ago, it went down, oh, what was it a year and a half ago? Um, it went down to about one, uh, 37, 38. Right. Um, I would say maybe anybody coming from Europe trying to get rid of their euros pretty quickly because of what's been going on? Not really. I, I, I don't think we're at that stage yet. Mm. Um, I think there's obviously been some correction in the, in the value of the euro to reflect the, uh, the ongoing problems, but obviously there are still ongoing and very significant efforts being made to uh, uh, support the uh, European Currency Union. Mm. Um, and hopefully they will bear fruit because, of course, for all of us, the uh, the side effects of, of it, it collapsing could be quite significant. Uh, very um, much so, yeah. And so, we, obviously, we don't want to see that happen. But um, I got rid of all my euros back in September. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's it. I think for the for the for the layman, the man in the street, 
you know, probably not the best idea to hold euros right now. Mm. Um, May well be, actually. So, uh, right, uh, what else have we got to cover? I'm just having a little look, because, uh, as we said, we have a lot of things we can go through. Um, okay, let's have a look. If you want to contact him, obviously, uh, you can contact him email, patia at salmonsthailand.com. That's S-A-L-L-M-A-N-S. Thailand, uh, or you can just click on the website www.salmonsthailand.com or phone him on 038 and he can answer any of your individual questions. You're watching the Mix 88.5 property update and we'll be back after these messages. The Mix 88.5 Property Update, brought to you by the award-winning Tudor Group, developers of Tudor Villas, and in the final stages of Tudor Court Condominium, Pratam Nak Soy 2. The Tudor Group, Thai lifestyle, European standards. The Mix 88.5 Property Update, brought to you by the award-winning Tudor Group, developers of Tudor Villas, and in the final stages of Tudor Court Condominium, Pratam Nak Soy 2. The Tudor Group, Thai lifestyle, European standards. Uh, so what else have we got to talk about within the market? Because of course I don't do this normally, so <laughs> I get a little lost sometimes. I think, you know, I, uh, personally I've been given a little bit of thought this week to what is, what is the reason? for these rental properties being so mm -hmm. so very busy um, because obviously we've had the floods obviously we've we've got a situation where um, while money may not be that tight in Europe I think an awful lot of people are, are worried about the future and therefore mm. perhaps not so free and easy with their money uh, as they would be in a in, in more of an economic yeah. um, uh, or a time a good positive economic time um, but nevertheless, things continue to do quite well here. The rental properties, as, as I said a minute ago, are very, very busy, but also sales uh, are ticking along very, very nicely indeed, um, notwithstanding the fact that you might say town a little bit quieter. Right, so. If I look at this year compared to last right, year and the year yeah. before, there's absolutely no doubt at all uh, that the market is, is a lot healthier. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, elements of the market that are uh, doing incredibly well. Um, off-plan sales uh, of, of a number of new condo developments are doing uh, incredible business, uh, selling vast numbers of units every single month, and obviously this has led to a... a What's, the secret? What's the secret? Well, I, th I think the secret is, um, I, I, you know, it's, it's all yeah. hypothesis, but all conjecture, but, but obviously you've got a situation where the West is, is in a, uh, a, a bad way. Um, Investing in real estate in the West right now is a dangerous game because it, you really don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we're on this knife edge. Um, p newspapers report that a double-dip recession is sometimes 50% mm. likely to happen, sometimes 75% likely to happen. Whether it happens or not, there's obviously a significant risk that it will. Yeah. If it does, obviously uh, real estate investments in the West are going to be very hard hit. But the reality is, in this day and age, there's an awful lot of people out there who have money to invest. Yeah. You don't want to leave it in the bank. I mean, right now, the last thing you want to do is leave money in the bank. For one thing, it's not earning any interest. For another, if you do have uh, a double-dip recession, yeah. one side effect of uh, such a recession, or one risk, is always that you get hyperinflation. Hyperinflation would destroy cash savings overnight, or it certainly can do, has done in the past. Yeah. Uh, and so leaving your money in the bank is, is, is very risky. And there's nothing worse than when a run on the bank occurs as well. well um, absolutely. Did you know, for instance, in Greece, because I was reading about this morning, all the eco economic stuff, they're, they're talking about what's going on. 20% of deposits have been removed from Greek banks since uh, January this year. Is that right? Well, 20%. You, know, you, you look back, um, what, two or three years, and was it, was it the Icelandic banks yeah. uh, that basically collapsed? And, and a lot of people, a lot of Brits who were encouraged to save in those banks through very high in interest rates that they, that they were offering, I, I know people personally that are still struggling to get a lot of that money back. Yeah. Whether they will or not, I'm not sure. But even if you eventually get it back, the last thing you want to be doing is fighting for three or four years to try yeah. to get money back that's yours and in what you would traditionally consider to be the safest imaginable place. So you've got this issue now. People have this money. Safe, they have yeah. these assets. Well, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Because 
you leave it in the bank, that which was always the safe option. And now the, rea the reality has dawned on people over the last three or four years that banks are not necessarily the safe, safe option that they once were. So leaving the, your money in the bank is probably not a great idea. So what, what was the, the other safe option? Well, maybe government bonds. Now what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing uh, Standard and & Poor and, and the other ratings agencies downgrade virtually all of the uh, first world countries yeah. in terms of their um, the, the security of their government bonds. So <laughs> you, you can't leave it in the bank. Investing by buying government bonds, the other uh, sort of blue chip investment, yeah. the absolutely safe investment historically, that's not, we're now being told that's not safe either. So what do you do with your money? Well, you have to put it somewhere. You have to put it somewhere. And uh, moreover, you have to put it somewhere where you're going to, it's going to um, make a return for you. Otherwise, all your assets, all your assets, not make a loss. Maybe some people are looking more at that as well, and that's well, fair. Although I think most people still want to, they want to return on well, it. They want to return on it. You know, I'm saying in comparison to what's uh, going on in Europe and everything, it's the uncertainty that yeah, makes uh, it so uh, bad. You, you need something that's secure. Yeah. Here you know that property is going to, say if you look at five years, ten years, you know it's going to go up in, in price and in value. Well, certainly I, th I think it's a fair assumption to make based on the, on the facts, based on the past, based on... The, the, the likely future here. I mean, you, you can look at Patia, uh, and when you look at a market, what you have to look at is the fundamentals. You have to ignore the, the simple assessment. I mm. look and see what's here simply now. What you have to say is, well, what's going to, what, what's the future going to be, and why? Yeah. And, and here you can say, well, okay, we've got the we've got the international airport close at hand. Um, we are equidistant between India and China. Uh, the two world's most populous nations uh, with vastly uh, or oh, sorry rapidly growing middle classes who are already coming here in great numbers yeah. Chinese tourists will be the biggest single source of overseas tourists to Thailand this year for the first time and I doubt that that will change for many years to come mm. and I anticipate that th that number will continue to grow for many years and yeah. India following uh, closely behind you know we're only uh, uh, as little as two hours flight from parts of India and China. It's not like you're coming from the UK on a 12-hour flight. You know, this is a hub. We're the equivalent of our med. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. And, and then you've, you've also got, you've got increasing numbers of people coming here from the, <coughs> excuse me, the Middle East, uh, and v a vast number of different places. You have such a diverse appeal uh, yeah. here in, in Pattaya. And, and these are things you've got to look at. Then, actually, the most important market of all when you're talking about real estate is the domestic market. Well, what's happening in the domestic market? Right now, you've got more ties entering into the real estate market here in Pattaya yeah. than at any other time in Pattaya's history, I would say. Um, and this has changed significantly over the last two to three years. Um, and they're not, just, they're not just buying one type of property. At the cheap end of the market, um, or the, right, the value end of the market, you might, you might call it. Um, for example, uh, there's a company called Porchland locally. They launched... Uh, a condo uh, on the way to my uh, on the way home to my house uh, a few months ago. It was sold out completely within a month. Uh, uh, a, a, another big Bangkok company launched a huge condo uh, again a few months ago, close to the Bangkok Pattaya Hospital. Big two big towers sold out within a matter of days yeah. of, uh, of each one being launched. This is not because of the the foreigners here. This is not because of the Chinese, the Indians, yeah. the Brits, the Australians. It's just this is uh, ties are entering the market in, in great numbers. And getting out of Bangkok. Uh, getting out of Bangkok, yeah. but also, uh, you know, you've, yeah. got, you've got different, like I say, there was a time when, when ties would buy at a particular level of the market here, typically luxury condos. And certainly, they've been doing that. Uh, North Point's uh, sales, uh, perhaps over the last 18 months or so, obviously it's a development that's now finished, a very high proportion of those have been to Thai buyers. Uh, Zaya, Raymond Land's uh, development next to to North Point. They uh, it's two towers. The back tower is Thai quota. Yeah. Front tower is foreign quota. The back tower is completely sold out. It was only launched four months ago. Every single unit sold. Front front tower is at forty five percent. Wow. Which, which is still very healthy. Oh yeah. But but the fact is the Thai units have all gone. An, an incredible. Does the, does the Thai market seem to like enjoy buying off plan? They they absolutely do. They they, um, they, they, they trust they, it more. They, they, yeah, well, the other thing about buying off plan, of course, is you don't necessarily need to come up with all the money at once. You know, if you're working and your income is, say, for, for, for an example, 50,000 baht per month, and you can buy a condo, you have to put some money down, obviously, but then you can buy 10,000 baht per month, 
before having to final, find a final payment, that suits a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and, and so the tires are entering this market like, like never before. And that, to a very large extent, in conjunction, in conjunction with uh, the other foreigners from all over the place who are coming into the market, is what's really driving the, the, the market forward right now. And like I say, when you're looking to the future, the fact that Patio is becoming so much more acceptable um, mm. to ties is probably the biggest single thing that's happened in the Patio yeah. market um, for the last decade or more. And, and that is what will drive it forward. Uh, like I say, f foreign sales, great, fantastic, yeah. very healthy for the market. But the core strength of the market has to be judged on, on domestic, domestic sales. Yeah. And so the fact that the domestic market here is, is growing to the extent that it is, is, is a, massive, a, a massive plus for Patio. Um, the other things to look at, um, right now, obviously, on the back of the floods, uh, a lot of the uh, big manufacturing areas in Thailand suffered significantly, Ayutthaya, uh, North Bangkok. Mm. Um, but the 38 industrial estates around Pattaya, um, on the eastern seaboard, they, didn't have, they had no problems at all. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if more of these uh, large companies start moving down to... Well, Already, yeah, or a new investment will come into this area rather than already. Lands. Even before the flooding happened, the vast majority of new foreign direct investment here in in Thailand has been coming down to the eastern seaboard, to these industrial estates, the Amata properties, the Himaraj land properties. Um, so it was already the case. Now you may well get some relocation from Ayutthaya, North North Bangkok. Um, you've got the biggest seaport in Thailand, the biggest deep water sea seaport in yeah. Thailand, just up the road. <coughs> Excuse me. No, poor Timmy's got to be. He's got, be. He's got so, a frog something in his throat. throat. Yes, I mean, yeah. a bit like Angela Merkel. <laughs> but um, so these are what I talk about uh, when I talk about the fundamentals of the market. You know, we're, we're, we've had the new roads built, so Bangkok is is not only close, but it's very easily reached. Much more easily reached than it was before the roads were done. These are the fundamentals you focus upon. The, the big shopping malls that are coming here now, the investment from yeah. companies like Central Patina Group, who built the, the uh, uh, Centara, uh, Grand Centara, or Centara Mirage, Grand or whatever it's called, um, and, and, and also the, the new shopping mall. The big companies are coming here, and the yeah. big companies are committing very significant resources here. These are the fundamentals you have to, have to focus upon, and all, they all indicate that the future for Patia uh, both generally and in mm. terms of real estate, is very, very positive indeed. Because the, then you're looking at the uh, what we'll call the commercial market, which is people that come here to work, be they Thai or Phalang. Um, also, you've got the domestic market. Then you've got the tourist side. So it's looking like it's... And, of course, the retirement. Uh, yeah, the market retirement market as well. So it's looking to me like a very stable area to buy, which I know a lot of friends of mine that have bought would say so as well, because when you're not just relying on one particular segment, it makes life a lot easier. And also, I'm guessing, because of the influx of the ties, it makes it a lot easier to sell the 51%. No doubt at all. Developers, you know. You, know, you go back uh, five or six years, and it was a major issue when developing here in Patia. Sell, how, how do we sell the 51%? What do we do with the 51%? Yeah. We can sell the 49% overnight. Very, very easy. But it was, uh, and I remember I used, to, I, I used to speak to developers about this all the time, and they would all come up with creative solutions as to how we can do it. And, and nowadays, like I say, Zaire is, is, is the great example. The, the tight sales sell. are quicker. Sold out in no time. Hey, you never know. You'll end up with a Thai quota being more expensive than the uh, foreign <laughs> quota. Well, uh, <laughs> the, the, the issue with that is that you can, in theory, sell 100% of the building to Thais. Yeah. You know, you don't. It doesn't just have to be 51. Yeah. Um, and and you know, obviously in Bangkok, when you're looking at condos, it's typically a very high yeah. proportion is, is Thai owned. So you never have a problem buying yeah. the foreign quota. And I anticipate that going forward, that's more likely to be the case yeah. down here. Yeah. Because you know, Patia is now becoming very mainstream with, with, with for ties and particularly with Bangkok ties. Well, we're on condos, we're talking about that, and we've got the property of the week here. Um, you've got all the details, I believe. Yes, so you have a little flick through. It's a 148 square metre two bedroom. You can even, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really quite an incredible deal. Um, it's 148 square metres, like you said, mm -hmm. two bed, two bath, uh, been recently refurbished to a very, very high standard. This is a stunning, spacious unit. Lovely European-style kitchen. What floor? Uh, ninth floor. Okay, good views. Uh, sensational views out over the. Uh, it's a, on a golf course. Yeah. Uh, out over the lakes and also to the to the coast and and, and the sea views. Um, it's a, like I say, it's been uh, refurbished to a very very high standard. 
big, deep balconies with lovely balcony furniture, uh, high-end Eurostar kitchen, luxury bathrooms, uh, and obviously very spacious. You, need, you don't find that many... Uh, well, that's a decent size portion of, of yeah. condos are now 150 square metres um, when you're talking about two bedrooms. It's quite big when you think about it, actually. It's, it? also, it's also a foreign quota unit, okay. um, which makes a lot of difference. And the truly incredible thing about it is the price is only 4 million baht, which works out at about 27,000 baht per square metre. Um, the reason, mm. well, it's actually located at Sriracha, yeah. um, which is uh, about 20 minutes up the road. Um, but now actually reached along very good roads. Uh, anyone who has done a journey, yeah. um, they've built a couple of big sort of road bridges that now take out Lam Shebang. You go up and over the road bridge and, and miss out the, the lights and the, the mm -hmm. congested area of Lam Shebang. And then the next town, or, or, not, or the next area, they've done an even bigger bridge over that. So again, you miss out the traffic lights and it's a very clear, very easy journey. Shirach itself. And, and you can listen to Mix 88.5 all the way along the road as well. I know, because I did it the other week. Yeah, and, and, and actually, I really like Shirach. You know, got, yeah. You've got a couple of very, very good hospitals there. I think uh, Pia Thai is there, yeah. and um, what's the other one called? Uh, Summit of it. Um, it's uh, lots of uh, the, the big Robinson department store and, and shopping mall. Um, it, there are some really good uh, shops, restaurants there, in particular Japanese, because yeah. Shirachi tends to be the place where most of the Japanese who are, who are down here working for so many of the Japanese country, companies with, uh, with the factories on the eastern seaboard, they tend to base themselves around Shirachi. Now, if you're looking at this property for a potential investment, of course, um, You've got the, if you can get into that Japanese market, a lot of the Japanese uh, management who are here are golf fanatics. Yeah. So you've got this beautiful big condo on a golf course. It's actually on a golf course. On a golf course. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Um, you know what could be better? Uh, a really good and, and, and ninth, ninth floor. You're not going to get too many falls, are you? So no, yeah. absolutely not. But it, it, you know, a four million bar for for such a beautiful apartment. Um, normally, when you're looking at a bargain, you're looking at something that you go there and you see why it's a bargain because it's yeah. run down it needs a lot of work this couldn't be more the other way it's been refurbished by an experienced um, developer to a very very high standard yeah and it's absolutely gorgeous all right if you want more details on that again you can email uh, patia at salmons uh, thailand that's with double l and double n in the salmons part dot com or www.salmons thailand.com tim's phone number zero three eight two five two five double eight right we're coming down we've just got uh oh just a couple of minutes uh, left is uh, what else what, what have we mentioned it's nice and cool at the moment which is nice as well well i think that come this summer you don't sweat as much as we do in the high season in, in the low season do <laughs> do i think it's probably worth mentioning that uh, this is going to be the last show uh before Ooh, christmas yes. um we're going to have a little break over uh, Christmas and New Year. Uh, I think back here... It's because Tim's going to work for Santa, that's why, isn't it, Tim? <laughs> yes, I, 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 I make toys every year. Yeah, he's a little elf, you that's know. Right. Um, and, and I think the, the next show's on the 11th of, 11th of January. Yeah. Um, giving us all a little bit of a, a break to enjoy the festive period. Um, and obviously give the market some... Uh, plenty of chance to come up with some new and interesting news for us yes, to Yes, I'm sure there will be in the new year, you know, it's a good time. Um, so yes, yeah, so we'll be saying goodbye to Tim for a few weeks, and like we say, until the 11th of January, we might, we may do a little special uh, regarding Tudor Group, who sponsor the show, um, who are coming in the, into the last stage of their development. Oh, yes. Uh, most of the windows are up and everything. Yeah, and uh, uh, but that's we'll have to we'll wait and see. Just uh, tune in, and uh, we'll let you know all about it. So I'm just trying. I'm just having a look at the rest of your things. Yeah, being remarkable year for real estate. Of course, there were the awards the other day. I don't know whether did you go to the awards? No. I, I couldn't work out how, how do you get an award? Uh, um, yeah, it, it's uh, 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 okay. I, I, passing just, on the backs, uh, isn't it? You know. Um, uh, because I always find with condos, one person's love is someone else's hate, isn't it? Because we all have different tastes. So, real estate generally, it's it's incredibly subjective, you know. And uh, an award, I guess, is is, is an objective or yeah. attempts to be an objective no, um, uh, judgment, albeit by uh, judges who obviously yeah. their opinion is They're subjective. So, <laughs> you know, it, who knows how it works? Yeah. And uh, you know, it, it's not something that, that I personally get involved with. Yeah. Um, I, you know, just uh, obviously. So much, uh, so many other things to do that yeah. finding the time, even just to go up to bank. I always say that these sort of things, it's always just an excuse to go out and have a drink with your mates, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, have, a, have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, and then have a nice dinner up there. And, well, uh, 
Uh, I think that's it. We've got about, oh, I've got about 20 seconds to wrap up. So everybody stay tuned. We've got the BBC News coming up live from London at the top of the hour as normal. I'll be back again tomorrow morning with the morning mix. Um, and also don't forget the other shows that we have here on Mix 88.5. So it's goodbye for me and it's goodbye from Tim. You've been watching the Mix 88.5 FM property update brought to you by the Tudor Group here on PMTV. We'll be back in the new year with more on the property market here in Patia. So I'll take this opportunity to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from us here at Mix 88.5 and of course from PMTV. Bye for now. The Mix 88.5 Property Update, brought to you by the award-winning Tudor Group, developers of Tudor Villas, and in the final stages of Tudor Court Condominium, Pratham Nac Soy 2. The Tudor Group, Thai lifestyle, European standards.